by Eric Gooseby. Dr. Gooseby is a professor of medicine and director of the Center for Global Health Delivery and Diplomacy Institute of for Global Health Sciences at the University of California, San Francisco. He has over 30 years experience in tuberculosis and HIV AIDS in the, as a clinician, researcher, and policy maker. In January 2015, Dr. Gooseby was appointed the UN Special Envoy on Tuberculosis promoting awareness of how to make the world free from tuberculosis. Uh, he's also the keynote speaker for today. So, Dr. Gusby, please. Well, good morning. It's a real pleasure and an honor to be reconvened with you today to continue the discussion that many of you in this room started years ago to highlight the importance and disproportionate impact that tuberculosis has on the lives of the people on our planet. And I think that we find ourselves in a continuous challenge of making repetitive points over and over again that are the right points but have failed to activate a policy response that is sustained. Uh, the intermittent, episodic engagement, the attention that is drawn to an area uh, has to uh, move into uh, an institutionalized relationship with policy discussions in each country now. And I'm hoping that we have packed enough evidence on the front end of this challenge, this request, this demand to country policymakers to understand and engage with the problem that is already in their country and already impacting their people. TB infections, disease killer, over the last 200 years, uh, over a billion TB deaths. Uh, it has out uh, killed all of the other diseases that we think of as active and aggressive and HIV AIDS, which has gotten um, kind of crescendoed in, from the early 80s into uh, global awareness uh, uh, the least. We're failing to identify four out of 10 people with tuberculosis. A global health security threat has gotten the interest of many developed countries. Uh, and I would uh, highlight uh, for you who are in dialogue with political leadership in your country to make sure you have uh, understood the relationship to security uh, insofar as um, uh, your country's uh, risks present. Uh, the politicians can take a security threat and rapidly move it much more rapidly than a public health threat. The targets we've talked about today, the um, uh, the, the 2030 goals and the 2035 goals, uh, more than aspirational, uh, but uh, I feel uh, there is an intellectual uh, legitimacy in stating uh, what needs to be reached, what can be reached with uh, reasonable modifications of investments. And I think that uh, our modeling has uh, really put that picture uh, clearly out there. Uh, the TB remains uh, the major public health emergency. Uh, just looking at how other responses have happened, the 1.4 percent decline, uh, the only one that is less than that is the respiratory infection one. Every other area of kind of general public health engagement uh, has improved. Why have we not made progress, progress and why are the SDG targets currently really not achievable? Well, there are processes in the establishment of medical delivery systems that uh, have the challenge everywhere of identifying those individuals in the population that are at highest risk, understanding where they are, how that risk is uh, uh, modified or changed, and how they position with access entry points to your medical delivery system. That is a dynamic process as the population uh, changes, as economies change, and requires that the delivery system uh, have a surveillance capability that stays on point. 
the um, delay in getting an individual to a diagnostic evaluation, uh, the delay in having uh, individuals started and uh, followed uh, uh, with uh, the appropriate diagnostic tests have been a continuous challenge. Uh, the population, uh, 50 to 60 percent of the patients begin seeking care in informal and private settings. Uh, that fact limits our ability to identify, enter, and retain patients in care considerably and needs to be addressed everywhere. The 52 percent in high burden countries uh, recommending gene expert use, uh, about uh, 40 Seven percent of those countries that have recommended it have purchased, and about half of those are at the point of implementing, uh, actually standing it up, not just in excellent centers of excellence or in centers, uh, but also uh, moving it out to point of care availability. Um, uh, I think that the platforms of uh, using uh, light microscopy still remain the dominant uh, uh, tool. Uh, and our ability to pivot into more accurate uh, diagnostic uh, avenues uh, has started. Uh, in HIV, this same delay was seen uh, in moving uh, CD4 machine capability, uh, in having diagnostic monitoring labs available for monitoring of liver functions, kidney functions. Uh, all of those required uh, really years to stand up uh, again, not just in capitals, but as you moved it to scale in every country. Uh, the providers, uh, three healthcare providers, are seen uh, on average before uh, the patient is diagnosed. Uh, and uh, that lack of uh, differential diagnostic uh, awareness of tuberculosis, uh, our uh, inability to move a person uh, with complaints consistent with TB in front of a diagnostic um, opportunity and then once diagnosed in front of a treatment opportunity is disconnected, disjointed, not a continuous uh, flow, uh, taking uh, often the person, the patient in, involved in the diagnostic workup uh, in, in a back and forth relationship with the delivery system when with just a little accommodation uh, and uh, cooperation, uh, the investments that have already been made uh, for uh, identification, entry, and retention need to be better orchestrated, need to target better, need to move more into the community, and I would say have more uh, community uh, orchestration where those impacted, affected, and infected with tuberculosis are involved in the management of identification, entry, and retention. So, um, the uh, holding us back aspects of it, the bottlenecks that end TB uh, to scale activity in countries really are fundamentally political uh, and clearly uh, financial. Uh, the world has uh, tried to drumbeat. Many of the people in this room are responsible for that uh, drumbeat, uh, accumulating over years. Uh, but accumulating in the September uh, 2018 uh, convening. Uh, reach, uh, the world uh, is looking and defining what their gaps are uh, in their country responses and treatment, uh, understanding that their prevention efforts are non-existent uh, and need to be stood up. Uh, People-centered responses, uh, we had a wonderful uh, presentation uh, about the uh, importance of uh, inclusion of those uh, in both planning and implementing programs. Uh, it's not hard to figure out how uh, and where uh, patient uh, input can be identified. The problem is often giving, uh, having the local leadership uh, open and receptive to allowing those who use and depend and need the services in on those uh, discussions. Uh, it's not a natural reflex, but it is an essential reflex. And virtually in every country there is that hesitation, but every country that takes the step into open, aggressive inclusion uh, improves their programmatic footprint.
improves, the, improves their ability to identify, enter, and retain people in care for the duration of the relationship needed. And I think we have underutilized uh, that avenue. Accelerate development of new tools. Uh, many of you in this room are, are way down the road with this. Uh, resource increase uh, has to be the first and last thing discussed with every policymaker. The understanding of what their budgets uh, are buying in way of outcomes for tuberculosis, how there is or is not synergy with other investments in the health delivery system, uh, how procurement distribution, lab uh, um, efforts are often collapsible uh, and an area where uh, savings can be uh, realized. The concrete commitments that came out of the September meeting um, are uh, important. Uh, they hold a target in place and in the HIV arena become the uh, uh, narrative that you're able to uh, continue between meetings or between uh, events that highlight uh, the expanding or contracting burden of disease. I think it is a way to uh, keep a benchmark and a way in a, a collective sense to hold uh, those accountable. Uh, it's collective though, and it needs to be broken down to each country's uh, portion of the 10 million new infections, the 1.6 million deaths, how many of those are from and in your country, and is your leadership aware of that burden of disease? It needs to be translated local. So, the investment priorities for high burden uh, countries and their partners uh, need to be uh, defined. Uh, the Lancet Commission, uh, in its publication, uh, we really went through uh, what we thought made the most sense uh, based on the evidence uh, available and then on modeling uh, that was done uh, for the uh, uh, publication itself. Priority one, patient-centered services, we've talked to that reach high-risk people with screening and prevention programs. This has got to be specific, aggressive, and geo-mapped. It needs to change as, uh, as targets change, as locations change, uh, with expanding economies. Developing new diagnostic therapies and vaccines, uh, we will not uh, be able to uh, massively drop numbers uh, without uh, both availability of current standards of care, but really uh, the development of new uh, interventions that prevent infection and spread. Invest the funds necessary to end tuberculosis. If nothing else, your country leadership needs to understand the disparity between their current investment and what you calculate, and those, and there are many to help you calculate, uh, what is the needed investment. That disparity needs to be something that you follow, that comes into every piece of literature that you uh, engage with, with leadership. Uh, and uh, this is the way you keep it on the table. Uh, and I think coming from the uh, scientific provider public health community is a, uh, is a gesture that cannot be ignored. They, they cannot act on what you tell them, but they will always have to listen to what you tell them. If you bring that into a community uh, request, a community awareness of your ask, of your dialogue, uh, I think things over two to three years always change because you really force them to move to a more reasonable position. And then finally, hold countries and stakeholders accountable for making progress to end the tuberculosis. So the solutions for these um, priorities are uh, really, um, have really already been talked about in the, uh, uh, with the speakers today. Ensuring that TB programs, person-centered, reach those at highest risk, prioritize improvements uh, and uh, relationships with those who are already interfaced with the population, such as the private sector, and to provide universal access to the diagnostics and drugs that uh, are required to do this. Those that engage can define targets that uh, are aspirational but achievable and getting comfortable with modeling exercises within your ministries of health uh, as the central tool that you use, changing the variables is uh, important. So uh, invest to accelerate the development of new tools. We, I think, all violently agree with that. Uh, generate 
the sustainable financing. So increased domestic resource mobilization is critical in every country. Uh, achieving that by prioritizing TB services, uh, being creative with new forms of taxation, improving the allocation and pooling of the health sector in general, but it really boils down to looking at what your current budget has in its investment, uh, is that it is investing in TB, and to understand what that investment creates, buys, in outcome. Understanding what the investment creates an outcome. Uh, and doing the budget like that uh, moves it into more of a strategic planning, but it introduces a linear movement from year to year, not just in the outcomes that you're monitoring, but in, the, uh, in understanding that the, how your investment change changes the outcomes that you get. So um, creating an enabling environment, commitment to multi-sectoral solutions, listening to survivors and advocates, uh, incorporating in a continuous improvement way uh, those uh, problems, hurdles, solutions that often are present not only in your provider staff, but also in those who use and depend on the services. We can build a TB-free world uh, with targeted proven strategies smart investments based on sound science, accelerated research and development, and a shout, cry, challenge of accountability that we bring to the political leadership in each country. I believe that we need to be louder with it, we need to be respectful but consistent, and speak to the um, tragedy of having a disease that we can prevent, we can diagnose, and we can cure unresponded to for so long, impacting so many people on the planet. If we're serious about a movement to universal health coverage, tuberculosis has and must be covered. And we cannot pretend that we can ignore such a large killer as we move into NCDs and UHC. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the time to speak to you.